today I've got the Byredo Mineral Scapes Eyeshadow Palette, which I'm so excited to try. I have been dreaming of different looks with this palette. This really is a dream come true for me. I'm a massive eyeshadow palette junkie. This is my thing. So I cannot wait to dive into this. And I'm going to do four looks with this. Two today, one each side, and another two tomorrow. I can't wait to see how they turn out. And if you're new here, hi, my name's Hannah. I'm 47, I'm not a professional, just somebody who really, really loves makeup. And I just love to share that passion here with you on my channel, show you different looks, new products, reviews, anything I think might interest you. If you think you'd enjoy that, please do like and subscribe below. And if you could comment as well, that really is so very helpful to me. So let's get onto this video. So this morning I filmed swatches of this. So I'm actually gonna show you that in a clip because it's a lot easier. Firstly, trying to show you this with all these lights and cameras and everything is extremely difficult. <laughs> but also, I think it looks better outside. We've got some lovely weather here today in Wales. It's lovely and sunny, bright blue sky. So it was a perfect chance for me to really film this and show you how it looks. So I will put the footage in whilst I talk to you about the product. A limited edition 18 colour palette inspired by the coloration and materiality of Byredo's native Sweden and the natural rural landscape that exerts its pull. Cool shades of northern spring colours from serene nudes via glittering stones to rich and velvety deep blues are cut through with silver shine creating an instinctive and sensual narrative through balance, sophistication and freshness. The soft, creamy and lightweight second skin textures deliver rich colour payoff in a single stroke and can be easily blended and layered. The effortless gliding application and long-lasting wear encourages intuitive experimentation. Housed in a mirrored steel case designed by founder and creative director Ben Gorham with the mineral stones that reflect the shades of this palette. And Lucia, the creative image and makeup partner, says this is not strictly about where we come from geographically, it's about something more ancient, our DNA, a cellular memory. It's about how landscape and memory have shaped us over millennia. It's a story that starts before you and ends after you. Well, isn't that the most beautiful description you've ever heard? And here is this exceptionally beautiful colour story. And something about me here is before I got into doing any of this, the reason I fell in love with makeup was because of eyeshadow palettes like this, because I was just teaching myself to do watercolor painting, something I found so therapeutic and I really, really enjoyed, something I wish I had a bit more time for, to be honest. But that is what really drew me to eyeshadow palettes because I feel like you can really tell a color story as you can when painting a picture. But this one, if I was going to choose all my different paints for painting a really creative scene where I love to have scenes of fields and sea and, and blue skies and then the sun hitting the sea or hitting the plants, these sorts of visions in my mind, well this palette absolutely screams of that to me because it's got every colour I would need to make that painting. So. I really want to try something a bit like that on my eyes. I don't know how that will come out, but I would love to create that sort of field to sky with the sun peeking out look. So I'm going to try that to see how that works. And then I'll just try other color combinations, which I think might go well together that I know I particularly enjoy. So this retails for 100 pounds and you can see the case is pretty big. It's extremely lightweight though, it really is. It's not like one of these brick ones, it's really, really light. I'm not sure how the packaging would stand up, as in, you know, it's not really solid. But it won't, I don't think it would break, but it's not like really luxury looking in my opinion. It's got this um, really good mirror here, which I haven't yet taken the seal off. And it stands up, so it's not one of these ones that falls down. So it's a very good sized mirror excellent for doing those close-ups. In fact, I'll take the peel off because it might be useful to me doing this demo now. There we go. Really good size mirror and it's clean for now. <laughs> don't know how long that will last, but yeah, really good. Really good size mirror, completely filling the whole panel. So this is a very good case to be fair. I did need to use my makeup cleanser to remove the fingerprints before filming and look at the state of it already just from me opening and closing it. So it does look very mucky very quickly, which I don't like. But anyway, 
let's look at these eyeshadows because that's all that really matters. So you've seen the swatches in my video, but if you did want to go back and look at them, the section where I have more eyeshadows, that's the first and second row going from left to right. So starting with the first one here at the top of my wrist and moving down. And then the bottom row is in one section on my arm. So that's the divide in the video. And what I'll do today is when I do the looks, I'll swatch the colours I'm using on the back of my hand so you can see. But I've actually kept the swatches on my arm, which I did now over an hour ago. So they'll be useful to me now as I'm going along looking at the colours. And what I can tell you is they've actually disappeared, a lot of them. So I'm not sure what that says about longevity because I can't really show you that easily. It's hard for me to show you because I've got them on the inside of my arm. But can you see how these ones here have really disappeared? And I've only been sat here in this room. I haven't been going around the house doing things. So these top ones have stayed, but here where my arm is probably just brushed against my top a bit, it's disappeared. And then this arm, which is the bottom row, the same. I don't usually find that when I do swatches. I usually find that they last quite a long time. In fact, some of them really need a good scrub to get them off. So not sure what that means about longevity, but I will, because I'm going to be filming this over two days, I can definitely give you an update on longevity. So for this first look, I'm going to use this as my sky, this as my field, and this as my pop of sunlight. And I think I might use this darker green here as a sort of eyeliner. So we'll see how that goes. I'll swatch these four colours for you on the back of my hand. And now I'm going to put my reading glasses on to read what they're called because it's written on the back and it's so minute it is completely <laughs> impossible for me to read. So this one is Grounding Sky, which is the blue. So very suitable since it's called Sky. And then this one is called Painting Land, which is the green field image I've got. And then this one here is Steel Light for that pop of sunshine. And the green I'm thinking of using as a liner, I don't know if it'll be deep enough, is called Sandstone. So these are the four colours I'm going to use in my first look. And this is the one I wanted to do the most because this is my painting. This is my field, this is my sky, this is my sun. And this is the sort of dark green foliage at the front of the field when you're making that painting. So as you can see, these are all quite shimmery. They've got that sort of satin soft feel. If you're familiar with the YSL eyeshadows or the Guilan Terracotta eyeshadows, the quads, it's very similar to those. They're also a bit similar to Suku, but they're all quite subtle. They're not that big powwow um, shimmer that you get with other palettes such as the ABH, which I'll just very quickly show you. So this is the ABH Nouveau palette and I, I love the shimmers in ABH. I love them for most of the lid for that real pop of brightness and shimmer. So I'm just going to do a quick swatch comparison for you with this green so you can see what I mean about how the Byredo is just that bit more subtle. This is Hope from the ABH palette. And this is Painting Land from the Byredo. Well, they are quite similar, but can you see the huge sort of impact difference you get with ABH? So you're getting much more of a subtle shimmer with Byredo. You will not get this sort of exceptional shimmer you get with ABH. So it's worth keeping that in mind before buying this, that it is much more subtle. I mean, we can see how they look together. I don't think they're going to look drab by any means. Subtle can mean really elegant, so these might really blend together beautifully. I've heard great things about their formulas. I've personally never tried them. This is my first palette from them, not because I haven't particularly wanted to try them in the past, but because I'm quite new to this. and I only really started collecting eyeshadow palettes last year, ever in my life, not just for, for the work I'm doing now. So. I might become a collector after using this, who knows, I might want to go back and find them all, but I believe they're limited edition, so I don't know if I'd be able to do that. But I certainly would be looking at their new releases if I enjoy this as much as I hope I will. I also like the fact that this is pretty cool toned because I'm starting to realise cool tones are really my thing and I'm really getting into them this year. So anyway, let's get started with this blue. And I'll be using my Sonia G T Tradition Series brushes, which I use quite a lot. So I'll be sticking with those and I'll tell you which number I'm using. These are the Keaki Kakashibo, if I've said that right, collection, which launched at the start of the year. So I'm taking some of that blue on the T4 brush. And I tapped off 
I'm not really picking up much at all, so I think I need to sweep around and really pick up quite a bit more product. But I didn't get anything. So that really shows how subtle these are. These are definitely very user friendly, I would say, because they can be built up. I really did sweep around quite a lot. So here we have what I consider to be my nice blue sky. I'm going to take this around most of the top, so it's going into most of the crease, but I'm stopping about there. Oh, that is a really, really nice blue. I love that. This would look really nice using the more silvery shades on the lid as well, I think. So using the T1 brush, I'm now going to go in with that darkest green. This is called Sandstone, which doesn't really make an awful lot of sense to me, so I don't know if the names are wrong under the palette. But anyway, so I'm using the T1 brush to take the sandstone underneath the eye and then I'm going to bring it up here and then I'm taking this across here so creating a sort of a wing but then I'm going to build it up a little bit more. I've got some on the T4 brush. This particular one so far has the most fallout. I'm going to use two but anyway, it has a lot more fallout. So you can see that you are not going to have any scary experiences using these colours because they do not pack an awful lot of punch from a colour point of view. But I've gone in now quite a few times with the brush and I've been able to pick up this amount of product, which is not bad really. I'm just taking this out to the outer V and then I'm just going to slightly meet the blue there. I think there's a little bit of definition between the two, you can see it's quite subtle though, even though this is quite a dark green. And in choosing this, there are no mattes being used in this look, it is all the sort of shimmery shades. But I don't think they're too shimmery for this not to work. And now onto the field, which is Painting Land, and I'm going to take this on my finger. And I'll take this across the lid. That's a lovely shade, I really like this. I think taking it on my finger as well is helping me to avoid any fallout because at the moment by tapping off a lot and then using my finger here I haven't touch wood had any fallout because these are really giving quite a bit of kickback. There we are, that is so pretty. It feels so buttery soft. And now using T1, I've gone into Steel Light, which is that sort of yellowy gold, which for me, my part of the scene, this is the sun, maybe starting to rise from the sky, seeing as it's quite low down, and bringing that beam of light across the field and slightly up into the sky. Oh yeah, that gives that, doesn't it? That's a really nice inner corner colour. I'm bringing it for the first third of the lid because I want it to start sort of beaming over the green and slightly into that blue there. I'm taking this liner brush. I don't actually have a name for this one. I found it on Amazon. So if you if you were interested, please ask me and I will dig out the link. But I just love the angle on this and I've been using it a lot. So I've gone into that deep green that calls itself sandstone. I'm just going to tight line a little bit here now and just sort of sharpen up this wing I did because when I blended everything out it pretty much disappeared. I'm just going to try and sharpen it a bit there. And I'm going to use this shade here called Mineral for underneath the brow. I think this might be the only shade in the palette that might work for this because everything else is a bit too dark. This is just good. Yeah, that's just got the right sort of not too dark and it's giving a nice shine to emphasize underneath the brow bone. I like that. You can see here how the blue has just spread up so easily. <laughs> I need to go in and clean that up a little bit. I'm just trying to take a little bit more of that green as well just to deepen this crease because I feel like I've lost the depth from blending out. Yeah that's good. Let's come back a bit now. I will go back in and tidy up a bit with concealer when I do my mascara, but I'll wait until I've done the other eye for that. So that at the moment is look one, using those shades together, and it is very pretty. 
I do feel this colour story is a little bit autumnal slash wintry though, so maybe not so much of a spring look, but I had to try out these colours together. So let's go on to the next colour. Now I'm going to keep this theme fairly similar, so it's going to be more of the sort of earth, I'm going to add earthy though, so earthy greens rather than going for some of the deeper blues and the greys and silvers. I'm going to leave those ones until tomorrow. So the colours I'm going to use now are going to be this one here, which is the more sort of earthy one. This is the matte and then this green and then this yellow. So this one should be a little bit more of a bright look. I'll show you the swatches. So this one is called Sun Dried. This is the matte. There's only two mattes in this palette and this is one of them. And then I'm going to use this one, which is called River Mist. That's a really nice green there. And then lastly, I'm going to use Sunbeam. So they're going to be my main three colours. And I might go in with that dark green as a liner again. I'll see how I feel when I've done this. So using my T3 brush, I'm starting here with that matte. So this is the sort of earthy, terracotta-ish almost. And this is a shade of matte that I really like to use with greens. So a little bit similar to the one in the ABH palette, but maybe a bit deeper. Kickback on this matte is massive, so you need to be really careful if you've already done your makeup. And I've just gone back in for the third time, and that's how much I'm getting pigment-wise with my third sweep into it so it's not massively pigmented so you probably will be dipping in and out to build up colour so be very careful with that kickback. I think with this one I'm actually going to take it all the way out and create the sort of full shape that I'm looking for on the outer edge not on the lid. And using my T1 I have picked up that dark green the third one in on the top row the sandstone that I used on this look here for this bit because I think it does make a good liner and because the only other one that might make a good liner is the deep blue and I don't really want to use blue in this look tomorrow I will definitely try those blues so again I'm going to deepen up the outer V with that same deep green I don't really know what else I can do for this look because I want a bit of depth but I don't want it to come from the blues or the purples which are the other two shades because I'm keeping this a sort of earthy greeny look again. I'm using this to meet up here with the matte and just slightly deepen up, a bit less so than over here though. So now I'm going to go in with River Mist and this one is more of a sagey green. Oh that is really pretty. Again it's given me autumn sort of vibes, not so much spring but anyway. That is a really really pretty colour, I love that. I think that's my favourite colour so far. And I think it works really nicely with browns, this sort of green. So it does work with that sort of terracotta matte across the top. I'm just going to take a bit more of that matte now and just blend this a bit better. Now I'm going to go in with that sunbeam in the inner corner and I'm going to take this now to the first third of my eyelid and get it to meet with the green. You can see that's a lot less impactful here than the colour I used in the first look. This one shows up texture less, whereas the one I used for the first look, that really sort of bright goldy one, is slightly showing up texture. Not enough to put me off using it, but this one is definitely more subtle. And probably a bit more elegant, I think. I do quite like the finish on that. I might even risk a bit under the brow because I don't feel like it's too bright. I'm back in with that liner pen to tight line using the deep green shimmer, sandstone. I didn't tap my brush off enough there. Look at all the fallout I've just got from that green. I'm going to try and brush that away. Oh, luckily that just disappeared. Whew. Yeah, so just slightly neatening up that outer wing there I created, only a small wing, and then going back underneath. And apart from tidying up, I think that's pretty much it for this look. So there we have it. The It is quite different. This one is a lot more bold, isn't it, with the blue and the gold. This one is a lot more subtle. 
and certainly this shade here Sunbeam is a lot more subtle so if that's the sort of look you enjoy I think you definitely prefer to use this shade it's really pretty so two similar colour stories but very different looks I think this one being so much more bold which I particularly love I love playing with colours but if I was going for a more elegant earthy vibe I would definitely go with this one so I'm going to clean up now and put some mascara on and give you my final thoughts so there is the final look with a bit of mascara added on and a little bit of a tidy up with concealer there so here we have the first look and the second look which one do you prefer? I mean, this one is definitely more of a wow <laughs> look because of that blue which really does pack a punch it's a lovely blue I think this blue will look really nice all across the lid this one is much more of a subtle elegant look I think so this one I said was giving me more of an autumn vibe but now I see the two together this one is more of the autumn and maybe this one's more spring like because as as you know I was trying to achieve that sort of all over image of sky and sun with fields. I'm waving these around because I wanted to try these. These are the Colourpop gel liners which I really love to use in the waterline. I've got quite a few of these in different colours and they last all day. They're really really good. I'm going to try the green one on this one just to see if it gives me that pop of brightness. It might completely remove the elegant sort of subtlety of the look let's have a look and this one is called a glow it gives a bit of a sort of metallic finish almost but it gives a bit of a shine and a pop of brightness to the waterline so yeah I think that's quite a fun way to finish the look definitely changes it and this one is called Prance and because I've got the blue at the top I thought I'd try the blue here so just again in the waterline it's a completely different shade of blue but anyway I quite like that definitely get the blue working with the blue there I really like that finish yeah I really enjoy these liners they're, they're really good value to be honest so if you're in the UK and you want to make an order from Colourpop you will pay a bit of a postage it's not terrible but the way I do it with Colourpop is I build up a, a big basket of things over time so when I've got a significant number of things I think it's worth paying for the shipping to the UK then because they really do some really good things Colourpop I am quite impressed by some of them and one of them is these I've bought I think about six or seven now I think I'd happily go back and buy more because they are very good and they will last all day long so anyway those are my two final looks using mostly greens with obviously a bit of blue and the goals I think the goals might come into play again tomorrow but anyway so tomorrow I'm going to dig more into these purpley grey blues and I don't know whether to do one look like that and the other look make it all browns like this row here in itself is a look isn't it I might just do that you know and then one with the silver and the blues so I'm gonna have to sleep on this and I can't wait to try these tomorrow I love doing eyeshadow looks I really do I'd love to know what you think down below in the comments about both of these two looks would you try either of them Keep in mind that with these shades, they are perfect one and done's. They really are. This is something the palette is perfect for. So if you wanted to even just put a bit of bronzer into your crease and just choose one of these colours, I think you'll find that they are really, really easy for that. But I'm not someone who ever just likes to do one colour. I do like to mix it up a bit. That's, that's my thing. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. So I'm back now after yesterday and I can confirm that the eyeshadows did stay on. I put quite a bit of setting spray on my face making sure they landed on the eyes. But I did notice that if I just touched the area here it did move. So that's just something to keep in mind. Obviously you shouldn't really be touching your eyeshadow during the day if you want it to last. But I do think these shadows can disappear quite quickly when you blend them out or touch them. So just something to keep in mind but on, on the eyelids and everywhere else it completely stayed so nothing to worry about really from a longevity point of view so let's get on to look number three so I've been looking last night at all the different color stories that I could come out with and I would probably be able to do about six seven different looks here so I've just come up with two more for you today I think I will try a couple more in my Instagram shorts and I'll be 
putting that here on YouTube as well in my shorts video. So keep an eye out for those. The next one I'm going to do is what I have termed ocean blues and greys. So these are the shades I've chosen for look number three. This one is High Tide, which is a very deep blue. And here is Lunar Rhythm, which is the greyish matte. And then Grounding Sky, which I used in my very first look. Love this one. And lastly, Mineral. So these are the four I've chosen for my ocean greys sort of look. Lovely selection there, I think. So using my T4 brush, I'm starting with the matte shade High Tide. So this is the second matte in the palette. I haven't tried this one yet. As with yesterday, a lot of kickback and not showing up much. So it does need to be built up if you want a bit more. And I'm going to take this right out to complete the shape. So here for the outer V, bring it up a bit high and back down. And using the T2 brush, I'm going into Lunar Rhythm. So this is the really, probably the deepest shade in the palette. Deep Ocean Blue. It's a really nice shade actually, I really like that. I'm going to take this up here. I'm not going to build it an awful lot in my outer V because it is such a strong colour but I will pack a bit more. So I've got some on my T4 brush and I'm going to put a little bit here into the outer V just for a bit of depth here. And I'm going to take grounding sky across the lid pretty much covering it but today I'm going to try and see if I can really get that to pop a bit more. So I'm using my Pat McGrath eye primer bear with me, it's a new one. This is the Intensifies Artistry wand. And when you put this on, it really does help shimmers to pop. So I'm just going to put this all over my lid where I don't have shadow. I want to see if this is going to really make a difference. In case you wanted to make these eyeshadows pop a little bit more like the ABH ones do. So now taking Grounding Sky onto a finger, I'm going to pat this on at first. Yeah, I think that is giving quite a bit more impact than yesterday, you know. I might try this on the other side as well today then. Grounding Sky is definitely one of my favourite colours in this palette, it's so pretty. Now I'm taking Mineral and that's going here in this first third and also for a little pop of brightness in the inner corner. That looks really nice alongside this grounding sky. I just put a bit of Mineral on with my finger and can you see how much it's really showing up? I think using the artistry wand has made quite a big difference today. I'll take some of the mineral underneath the brow. I'm going back in now with High Tide with this liner brush to give more of a sort of deep line and just tight line here as I did with both looks yesterday. So this shows how one colour can be used in a different way because you can spread it out and blend it so it has a slightly less pigmentation underneath the eye and then when you're using a liner pen you can really deepen it up. So I'm not using two blues, this is exactly the same blue, one on top of the other. So I'm happy with that, I don't think I want to add anything else to that. I love mixing blues, different shades of blues with silvers, it's one of my favourite things to do. I really like it and those are stunning, really like that. So on to look number four, my final look, and it's going to be very different, so I'm going to look completely bonkers, <laughs> but this is going to be my peachy look. So this one is probably the most sort of soft, spring-like look out of everything I've tried from this palette so far, and these are the colours I'll be using. The first one is Sun Dried, which is that matte, and then Low Tide, and then Pink Flame, and lastly, Sunbeam. So 
So they are the four I've chosen to put together. So using the T4 brush I've gone in to sun dry the mat and I'm going to be taking this through all of my crease and out here out of the and just bringing it in so not on the lid but all of the crease and above and with all of my looks I always try to make sure that my shades are above my crease my crease being there because obviously it disappears and you won't see anything because I'm slightly hooded so that's why I always work above if you want an idea of what the kickback is like, this is how powdery this gets when I dip the brush in. I don't want to touch it now because it will fall all over the desk, but can you see all the powder collecting on the surface of this, this one I'm using now, sun dried? It really does make a huge mess on my desk from tapping off. That's the one complaint I would have about this is it's just got a little bit too much kickback. So you do need to be careful and do think about your sort of workspace when doing this because it does make quite a mess. So using the T2 brush I've gone into low tide and I'm going to take this underneath and bring it up here. I'm taking some more on T4. I'm now going to start building this up a little bit in the outer V. See how much depth I can get from this colour. I don't want a lot, I want this to be more of a spring vibe, so a little bit of depth is absolutely plenty for me. So stopping about here and just taking it to the outer V and just building up a little bit of depth. So that's enough depth and I'm going back in with this artistry wand from Pat McGrath. For some reason it's coming out quite a lot of the pen, so I'm just putting a little bit on and then rubbing this in. So now taking pink flame on my finger, I'm going to put this across the lid. That is stunning. I knew when I swatched this, this was likely to be one of my favourites. And it might just be my absolute favourite out of the whole palette, which is a surprise because normally with me it's greens. But that is beautiful. I think it works so nicely with these shades as well. Loving this look. So now I'm taking Sunbeam for that inner corner and I'm going to bring this just into that very first third of my lid. This is the shade yesterday that I felt was a lot more of a subtle gold inner corner pop compared with the sixth shade in the palette. I can't think of the name now. But yeah, that gives a nice inner corner pop. I'll take it under the brow as well. I'm going to try to line a bit more using low tide. I don't know if I can because it's not a very strong colour. I'm hoping I can at least get a bit of definition. It's a tight line here. I don't want to go in with a deeper shade because it's such a light, fresh spring look. I don't want dark colours entering into this one. I think that's given me a little bit of definition. Not a lot, but a little bit. Well, I am really happy with that look as well. These two are definitely my winners compared with the yesterday, and I really thought it would be the greens I'd be falling in love with the most. Although I will try the greens again. I think I would love to do the sagey green there using this one, which is called Mineral, I think. I've written it down somewhere. Yeah, Mineral. I think using one of these greens with the Mineral just the two for a lighter sort of spring look. Really loving both of these looks. This palette is so much fun. Anyway, I'm going to finish off with some Colourpop liners like I did yesterday. So this one is called Honey Dude and I'm just going to put this on the peachy side for the inner corner. Now this won't show up much. This is one I actually use quite often. I always put a brightening liner into my waterline for every single day. So this is one of the shades I like to use for that because I don't use to, like to use something that's a bright white. So this is quite a nice one for giving that sort of pop of brightness. It's just given a very subtle sort of, not peachy, but almost peachy 
little colour there in the waterline. I like that. And for this side I've got Kicker, which is a silver. So picking up really on the mineral shade. And I'm going to take this into the waterline as well. There we are, not a huge difference, but just a little bit of silvery shimmer there in the waterline. So yeah, I really like that together. So now I'll pop on some mascara and I'll be back for my final thoughts on all of these looks. So there we have my final two looks. Which one do you prefer? I've got to say I'm a bit torn between the two of them. So I think it completely depends on what I'm wearing, where I'm going, because I love both of these. I really do. This is such a summery one. I love that. I do love blues and silvers together, so really, really enjoyed those. And I'm definitely going to be trying out some looks with greens. So what can I say about this palette? I think it's beautiful. The only downside I can say about it is the kickback and the fallout, so you do need to be really, really careful. I've just cleaned up a huge mess here on my desk, so it's messy and if you have already done your makeup as I have today it's absolutely fine but you really need to tap off so you really need something on your table before <laughs> before starting if that's the case because it went everywhere but otherwise it lasted well yesterday they're very easy to work with they're pretty mature skin friendly there was just that six shade this one here which was a little bit too much for me on top when I layered it yesterday I thought it wasn't so good on my eyes but apart from that everything else has looked quite good from a mature skin point of view they're very easy to work with they can definitely be blended on top of each other because as you can see here with the mineral here and the grounding sky as they blend together they really do work very nicely so one option again is to go for one of those really deeper shades maybe all over the lid and you could take something like mineral across the whole lid to really change the color so create your own colours, which is another really fun thing to do. So these are like toppers, I suppose. So the sort of shades I would use for that would be these two, and possibly, possibly this. That that's the really goldy one. Possibly this one. So endless possibilities. And for me, I definitely would like to try any of these three greens with this mineral, which I love. Mineral is one of definitely the best shades, I think, because it's so good for that inner corner, under the brow, and this pop of light here. And so is this one here. I can't remember the name of it. It is Sunbeam. I've written them down in front of me. So Sunbeam, again, I think these two are perfect for that. So I definitely want to experiment more so many possibilities with this there really is so yeah look out on my channel for shorts videos i'll definitely try at least another two looks with this i think on camera anyway but i'll be playing with this quite a lot and i'd be quite surprised if it didn't make it into my favorite so maybe i'll put my favorite look in that video if this is still my favorite but i mean i've, I've really enjoyed the dior eyeshadow palettes this month but this is giving it a run for its money and I've also got the Busy Art to try out this week, so who knows, but this is stunning. So I would love to hear from you. Have you picked up this beautiful palette or will you be picking it up? Have you maybe tried by radio before? Because I certainly haven't. So I'd love to know what you think. Which of the four looks did you prefer and would you be trying any looks like this? Obviously you can try one and done's and have great success with this as well. You don't need to mix all the colours like I have. But I think mixing about three or four is a really nice way to go. So yeah, I've loved it. I hope you've enjoyed this too. I really, really have loved it. And if you have, please do like and subscribe below. I would really appreciate that. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for returning. And I hope to see all of you again for my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.